I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. These are the words of Satan, the devil, as they are recorded in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. And Isaiah is showing, he is writing through the inspiration of God, the mentality of the devil. I will ascend unto heaven. I will be like the Most High. I will go up to the constellations and the planets and the stars. And I have spent years reading about paganism, reading about the pagan religions of antiquity and also of modern times. And one thing that they all have in common, and paganism throughout the globe it's all very, very similar. You know, if you look at Hinduism, Greek mythology, Roman mythology, uh, Scandinavian mythology, Aztec mythology, they are all very similar, regardless of the different languages of the countries or, or, or of the peoples that uh, worshipped these gods. Regardless of the linguistic differences, they are all very, very common in that they all are fixated on astral religion, astral objects, the constellations, the stars, the planets, the sun, the moon. And not only are they fixated on these things, it's not like they're just sitting there saying, oh, look how beautiful the planets are, let's worship them. They had an entire political ideology that encircled around this fixation on the stars and the planets and the constellations. And so what these ancient peoples would do, be it the Incans, the Aztecs, the, you know, the ancient Aryans, the Rig Veda Aryans of India, the ancient Romans, the Greeks, what, the way that these people applied their political ideology to their astral religion is that they, they ascended their governments into the realms of the stars and the planets and the constellations. They would say things, for example, like what the Incans would believe, that the king and the queen, the royal family, are descendants of the sun god. And if you look to the ancient Assyrian text, it talks about how the king and the astral gods are interconnected. That's what the Tower of Babel was all about. The Tower of Babel was in ancient Mesopotamia. It was built under the superintendence of a Cushite king named Nimrod, and the entire tower was about worshipping the planets and the stars. That's why it says, let us make us a city and a tower whose top shall rise up to heaven, to the heavens. And if you look at the Hebrew etymology of when it's referring to the heavens, it's not talking about the heavens where the angels sing and where the angels reside and where God sits on his throne. It's talking about the planets because these ancient peoples, they believed that the gods were the luminaries of the night sky. They also believed that certain ancestral spirits would go up to the sky and become stars. Uh, for example, there was an emperor, I think it was the Emperor Augustus, uh, it was a Roman emperor, who, after the death of his father, he orchestrated uh, a large series of athletic events, including gladiatorial matches, in honor of his father. And they say that during the days of these uh, athletic events, there was a certain star that could be seen in the sky, even during the daytime. And the emperor pointed his finger up to the sky and said, this is the soul of my father. 
the ancient Rig Veda Aryans of ancient India, they also had a very similar belief. They held that there were certain holy people or certain sages who reincarnated as stars in the sky. And so this ideology, it had a very sinister agenda in that it got people to worship the king as some sort of a bridge or, you know, as some sort of a bridge between the earth and the, and the constellations and the night sky luminaries. And if you look at what's happening right now in several parts of the world, you see a rise in this despotic pagan ideology. And you are seeing it in its most explicit form in India and also Japan, but we're talking about India. Um, Japan also has this sort of thing going on where you have these hardcore nationalists like the president of Japan himself, Shinzo Abe, who want to bring back imperial emperor worship. They want to bring back sun worship, the god, the worship of the goddess um, Amaterasu, who they hold to be the sun goddess. And they believe that the emperor is a descendant of the sun, as the Incans did, and the Aztecs. And they want to bring all that stuff back. So you have that going on in Japan. But you also see this happening very intensely in India with the Bharatiya Janata Party or the BJP. I think in English it stands for the Indian People's Party. And the president of India, Narendra Modi, he is a hardcore Hindu nationalist who wants to purge India of non-Hindus. His party wants this. In fact, Narendra Modi, he took office in the year 2014. Just a number of months after Modi won the presidency in India, won his election, a leader of the Bharatiya Janata Party, his name is Rajasvar Singh, declared these words, quote, Muslims and Christians will be wiped out of India by December 31st, 2021. And you have a lot of rhetoric like this coming out of the BJP, talking about purging India of foreigners. And by foreigners, they're talking about non-Hindus. Even if these foreigners have been living in India their entire lives, because they are Christian or because they are Muslim, they are not considered true Indians because a true India is somebody who follows the Hindu religion because the word India comes from the word Hindi. Don't you understand that? And so there is a lot of political legislation that is being pushed in India that, you know, is being cloaked as well, you know, as another census of the population or it's being cloaked as a way to improve the patriotic fervor of India, when in reality it's all about, you know, purging the country of the unwanted people, or purging India and, you know, putting people in camps and things like that. And you have these Hindu nationalists who are like, oh no, it is not about that, it is simply about continuing the process of a census that has already been in India anyway. We are simply making a simple emendation of a, of a pre-existing law that goes back to the 1950s, that all this is about Christian and Muslim propagandists are trying to destroy the strong patriotic constitution and disposition of the Indian populace. And so all of this is about is trying to purge India of certain elements that are actually draining and, 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 and really acting as a burden on the people of India. It doesn't matter if you are Hindu, Muslim, Christian. We are all Indians. But this, is, this sort of talk, this sort of, of you know, softening things up is coming from a party that has major leaders who have openly talked about genocide of Christians and Muslims in India. Like, do you really want... It's like, it's like saying, you know, oh, the Nazi party, you know, they're saying that, that these camps, they're, they're, just, they're just places, they're just hospitals. 
You know, because the certain, you know, elderly people, they have certain ailments and stuff like that. And they have really good doctors in these camps, you know. They're, 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 just, they're just trying to help the sick. That's all. That's all they're trying to do. And it's like, well, this is coming out of a party that has for years been talking about, you know, genociding those who are hindrances to the Lebensraum of the Third Reich. I think you really have to be a true wishful thinker and a fool to believe any sort of vacillating coming out of a party like the BJP. Now, what's interesting is that you have these hardcore Zionist types who love talking about how, oh, Iran has called for the deaths of all Jews. But yet these very types of people will collaborate with hardcore Hindu nationalists. I can give you a number of examples right off the top of my head. One, you have the Pamela Geller and Richard, or not Richard, sorry, Robert Spencer, although those two aren't that different. They're only, they're only different in how they present their rhetoric. But you have the Robert Spencer, Pamela Geller trio, and they actually have a hardcore uh, Hindu nationalist in their organization, Stop the Islamization of Nations, S-I-O-N. And he is actually a lobbyist for the BJP, and I believe he is located in Houston. The name of this Hindu nationalist who is in the uh, organization of Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller is Babu Susilan. And this is what Babu Susilan has to say about Christians in India and also on the rise of Hindu nationalism and how he is just so happy about the victory of Modi. He says, quote, at the center and in several states, the government is controlled by classically constructed ruling elite that are completely alienated from Hindu culture and deeply absorbed into a ruthless and self-serving clique of Muslims and Christians mafia gang that seeks power for its own sake. The powerful elite want to destroy our sacred Hindu culture and receive generous help from the Islamic and Christian world. To ensure safety, security, and social development and good government as well as to ensure freedom for our children, we have to join together and vote for the Bharatiya Barahata, Janata Party, the BJP, of course. He also said, quote, Indians under Modi can walk as a free man with self-esteem and pride as Hindu. And it's not just this. We also saw a collaboration between the Trump network and Hindu nationalists. There is a very famous Hindu nationalist by the name of Shalab Shali Kumar. He is a Hindu lobbyist who, alongside members of his family, donated over a million dollars to Trump's campaign. And Steve Bannon is very close to this Hindu nationalist. And this is what Steve Bannon said in May of 2019 in an interview that he did with India's WION TV channel alongside his good uh, Hindu friend, Mr. Kumar. He said, when Mahdi first won five years ago, I was very proud of the fact that Breitbart, we covered that election very closely. And the reason was the day he won, we put a headline that he was India's Reagan. And I have been incredibly impressed with Mahdi since the first day I heard of him and started following him in Indian politics. This is what Bannon had to say about Mahdi. Now imagine if some Palestinian nationalist or some Islamist Palestinian party won in the West Bank. And major members of this party said that we want to kill every Jew in Jerusalem. And you have lobbyists for this party in the United States, and they have given over a million dollars to the Trump campaign. And they have talked about how by the year 2021, every Jew in Jerusalem will be gone. And you have Trump saying, oh, this is a great party. 
We love these guys. Or you have people who are close to Trump saying, oh yeah, this is a great party. Love these guys. Palestinian self-determination and nationalism. Oh yeah. Allah Akbar, baby. I think the Republicans, like the conservatives, they would be, at least I hope they would be, at least a little concerned. But if you, you know, reverse it around and say, hey, the Democrats are supporting a party like that. Oh my God, the Democrats, they want genocide of every Jew in Jerusalem. They want to kill. The Democrats are the new Nazis, everybody. They're Nazis. But that's actually what's going on. But it's not a Palestinian party. It's not some Muslim party. This is a radical, fanatic, Hindu nationalist party, the Bharatiya Janata Party. And it's being backed by a guy who is very close to Trump, and he was very close to Trump's campaign. He was extremely involved in Trump's campaign. And Trump has received over a million dollars for his campaign. He received over a million dollars for his campaign from BJP fanatics. And yet not a single Republican has objected. But yet they want to talk about Iran and how, oh, look how evil Iran is. And the Democrats, they, they support Iran because uh, the Iran deal, and they're the Nazis, when the reality is that the Iran deal was about controlling Iran and preventing Iran from making nuclear weapons by getting rid of the sanctions, by making sure that Iran goes through checks, and at the same time, satisfying Iran's economy by allowing Iran to have trade with other countries without all, the, all of the impediments. And by destroying the Iran deal, you have actually broken the leash that was put on Iran by the Obama administration. I know people are going to say I'm a big liberal for saying that, but it's just the facts. The fact that Trump, after saying, the fact that after Trump declared, I no longer want to be part of this Iran deal, let's pull out, Iran all of a sudden goes beyond the limit for how much plutonium it can, it can enrich. It tells us something, that the Iran deal was actually working. So, who's actually helping Iran? The Republicans are helping Iran by, by going against the Iran deal. The Republicans, by pushing for America to withdraw from the Iran deal, actually helped the fanatics and the hardliners of Iran. Because they gave them that incentive, they gave them that, pre, that uh, pretext that they wanted so that they could justify pursuing nuclear armament. So, it really is quite amazing how people are just so reversed these guys are Nazis for help because they did the Iran deal, but yet you support the Republican Party, which has unleashed Iran. Oh, the Democrats, they're Nazis because they are sympathizers to Muslims and to Iran. Yet you love going on Breitbart.com and you love Donald Trump and it's all, which are both connected to Hindu nationalists. You love going on Breitbart, which has been supporting anti-Christian Hindu fanatics. Like, you do realize that all of your your pro-Mahdi uh, sympathizers in, in, in right-wing media circles, they are actually supporting a party that wants genocide. Like, you do realize that, right? I, I hope you guys can finally realize that. Whoever's listening to this video, and I know it's going to be a small amount of people, I hope, I've, I hope I've convinced you to open your eyes as to this very, very dark reality. Let's go back to the Tower of Babel. I want to read to you guys some lines from ancient Hindu text. This is from some ancient Hindu scriptures. I believe it's from the Rig Veda. But it talks about rituals regarding the king and his astral or his cosmic position. And, for example, and this is from a book that I'm almost done reading. It's called The Roots of Hinduism by Asko Parpola. Very boring read, but if you can endure through it, you will learn something from this book. And it says here, as the Satapatha Brahmana, so not the Rig Veda, 
The Satapatha Brahmana explains, quote, It is the seasons, the year, that he, the Advaryu priest, thereby makes him, the king, ascend. And having ascended the seasons, the year, he is high, high above everything here. What does Satan say in the book of Isaiah? I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. In the parallel consecration ritual, in the Vajapeya sacrifice, also known as the Brasapati Sava, the ascent to the zenith is more concrete. The king dons the Tarpia garment and with the help of a ladder ascends the sacrificial post. Reaching the top, he declares, quote, We have reached the sun, heaven. We have become immortal. And that is pretty explicit as to the despotic, supremacist ideology, imperial or governmental ideology of Hinduism. And these BJP fanatics want to bring this back. And I know on this channel and on Shubat.com I talk a lot about geopolitics, and it seems at times that I'm very secular, right? I like to talk about politics and geopolitics and projections as to what is going to happen. Uh, in Europe and in Asia, in the Middle East. And for years now, we've been talking about the next world war and how it's going to look like and how we will see Turkey, Japan, Germany, Russia, and other countries involved in the next global conflict, how there is going to be an, another global conflict. It is going to be similar to what happened in World War One and World War Two. And at times it seems like, oh, Ted has gone very secular. And that's not really true. I just like presenting what I know. You know, I don't like the idea of trying to find a prophecy in the Bible to correspond to every single current event in the news. Like, oh, Donald Trump won an election. Where is Trump in Bible prophecy? And before you know it, you're reading some book by some scam artist who tells you that they had a vision about Donald Trump. No joke, this actually exists. And, but I, I just like to present what I know. And what I know is that we have a political ideology in India that's about supremacist agendas. That's what this whole thing about, you know, the, the BJP, they want to, um, they want to um, enact this new legislation that basically is going to force people in India to prove their Indian patriotism, to prove their Indian citizenship. And they're basically saying that if your ancestors were, if your ancestors were living bef were living in India before March twenty fourth of nineteen seventy one, then you're okay. You would have to prove it, but you're okay. But if they were born after that date, then there's going to be problems, and you are going to be considered a formula. Uh, not a for you're going to be considered a foreigner. Said a formula. You're going to be considered a foreigner. And you can have a guy who has been living in India for you know his whole life, but because his parents crossed the border from Bangladesh into India during the war between Pakistan and Bangladesh, that guy is now considered a foreigner. And they want to put people who are considered illegal immigrants or illegal migrants into camps. And they're actually right now building a giant camp for migrants in the, um, in the Assam region of India, which is in India. It's a, it's a region that it's located in like the far eastern part of India and it borders with Bhutan and China. It's a border state of India. And they want to build this giant camp. In fact, they're already working on it. And they're using they're using undocumented immigrant labor to build it. So the people who are building it, they're slaves that actually could be deported after, or not just deported, they could actually actually be forced into this detention camp that they are actually building with their own hands. But we we just want to talk about Iran all day. We want to talk about oh Iran and Look how evil the Democrats were. But yet you have an administration that supports this regime and has received support from the acolytes of this regime. 
It's very, very sinister. But you want to talk about the source of all of this? Because I know it seems that at times I am quite secular. I'm just presenting what I know. And what I know is that you have a demonic ideology in India that wants genocide. And if you look at the ancient roots of this religion, you find the very ideology of Satan himself. Who said... I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You want to see these words manifest into reality? Look to India. Look to Japan, where you see this sort of revival of government worship, and astral religion. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this message. You guys just heard some Theo. Logi, God bless.